across the land, JoePags.com, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, email, all right there. Also, Newsmax TV. It's the Joe Pag Show. Glad to have you here. And glad to have from CampusReform.org, it's Sergey Kelly. Sergey, how are you? Good. How are you, Joe? I'm doing great. These reporters, these correspondents, these great folks who put this website together are doing real work when it comes to doing journalism. The legacy media cannot keep up with them. Go there every day like I do. It's campusreform.org. That's the right website to see some of these these nutty stories that are happening on campus. And we have we have a lot of stories about how evil it is to be white. And I can't personally, Sergey, I can't wait to talk about that. But let, let's start with what's leading the news, um, and that's this back and forth between Nancy Pelosi, Chuck Schumer, and the president. The wall, do we need the wall? We don't want the wall. We have to have the wall, and uh, and the government shutdown. Now, you're still in college, right? Yes, I am. Yep. All right, so you just got out of class a couple of minutes ago. We just talked about this a second ago. Um, what are you hearing? Is, is it the right assumption to make, and, and I make this assumption because I read you guys every day, that the vast majority of the loud voices on campuses are going, oh, yeah, Trump is horrible, he hates the brown people? Or are there some logical thinking people on campus that are saying, well, maybe we do need a barrier? What's going on? Uh, mostly what you first start in that argument. Most of it's very, they don't even like to talk about the uh, the need or the desire, the maybe the practicality of a wall. It's always, if it has Trump next to it, it can't be talked about. Do they not realize, do you think, and do you ever engage in conversation with them, do they not realize that five years ago, Schumer, Pelosi, Clinton, I mean, down the line, they all wanted a a fence. In fact, in 2006, so what, 12, 13 years ago, they all signed this bill and said yes to building a fence along the entire border. Do they know that or do they not know that because they're only paying attention to what they think is information that they can agree with? It seems like they don't know that because when you do bring that up, they kind of they acknowledge it, but then it kind of turns into, well, it's still Trump. <laughs> <laughs> what does that have to do with it? I don't know. It's somehow just his name turns people off. And, and Cabot Phillips the other day, of course, went out and did that video, whereas he, he's actually yeah. quoting the left. He's quoting Clinton and and Schumer and down the line and Biden. And what's happening is you've got people who are saying, oh, it's horrible. It's disgusting. I can't believe he would say that. And then when you tell them who really said it, they went, well, they must have had a different reason to say it. No, it's the same reason. The the border is porous and it's open and there's a problem there. So uh, is, is there really are there really not any logical people that are hearing this argument going, "Okay, I don't really like the guy. I don't like his hairdo. Don't like the way he speaks. But on this one, he's right. Um, definitely not from top down people at MSU. You won't hear it from administrators and you won't hear it from your professors. You'll hear it maybe from the guy or girl sitting next to you if you start talking with them, but never a a top down effect, I guess. It's uh, Sergey Kelly from campusreform.org. Go to at Sergey Kelly, all one word on Twitter. Go follow him. I'm going to give you a follow right after this. So you're in East Lansing now? Yes, I am. That's right. Now, I don't know if you knew this, if you talked to my daughter, Sam, but I was a TV news anchor in Lansing for five years. I was actually there when, oh. they, when they won the national championship back in, what was it, 2000 or whatever. So I love the area. I love the school. But, man, you guys are a mess. And the reason why I say that is, I mean, John Engler, who was the governor when I was actually a TV news anchor there, just was ousted, basically. He's leaving the job because he said something yep. wrong. The whole Larry Nasser thing is a complete and utter mess. Yet at the same time... MSU, instead of focusing on making things better and making things right, they're actually what? They're giving intercultural badges? What is an inter- <laughs> That's right. Sergey, what is an intercultural uh, badge, and why is that so important on the campus of MSU today? Well, apparently the way the program's laid out, in order to reflect their mission statement on being an inclusive and diverse campus, they need to give out uh, badges. You can either earn one about self-awareness, engaging with others outside of your culture. You can also earn ones for recognition of equity and inequity. And once you get these four different badges, you can get certified, which they say will enhance your degree. It sounds like they should be certified. Okay. So, it, it, I mean, this is not unlike Girl Scout badges? Um, so I heard that they aren't physical <laughs> badges, unfortunately, oh. but they are digital badges. Well, how do you have a digital badge? A badge is a real thing. That's weird. Yeah. <laughs> so, so, so like in your record, Sergey Kelly has these four badges because he talked to a black person. He, he uh, had a conversation or lunch with somebody who was gay, maybe uh, had an abortion conversation and agrees that choice is the right way to go. I mean, is that how you earn them? 
it seems like they they don't exactly word it that way, but when you look at what they're trying to get from people on, right. they have to have a mentor. There's right. there's severe vetting. They list that in the document. Um, you do have to go to intercultural events and stuff like that. And I've been to some of these events just to scope them out, and they're not they're not very friendly to different thought. It's a very uh, it's a certain facet of campus and only a certain facet of people there. Isn't it kind of an oxymoron then to call it a cultural awareness or a cultural get-together when you don't really want to share cultures, you just want to exclude the current culture of this country? And if you dare raise your voice and say, hey, let's talk about, about American culture too, you're demeaned as yeah. what, a white guy or something? Yeah, exactly. Like they don't, they're not going to talk about American history or why Judeo-Christian values are great in that program at all whatsoever. <laughs> wow. I mean, have you... What I would love to see you guys do, and I think that you're bold enough to do this, Sergey. Let me know if you can do this. The next time there's a oh. dumb cultural get together like this, or some sort of a uh, where you could win a badge for doing this, that, or the other, just ask a simple yeah. question. Hey, could you do this in Yemen? Or ask a dumb question like, Hey, mm-hmm. could you do this in Saudi Arabia or North Korea? Or could you do this in China? I mean, just ask them mm-hmm. that question and then wait for an answer. Because the only reason they can yeah. do this dumb stuff is because we're so damn free here. Yeah, exactly. And we're free yes. because it's our culture that did that, a culture that mm-hmm. they seem to hate. Help me understand, my friend. Yeah, it's 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 a it's a weird problem. It seems like they have too much to do on their plate and they can't focus on maybe the Nasser situation or right. actually having free speech on campus, but now they have to create badges for diversity. Uh, programs. Well, they can. I, I'd like to create a. They can kiss my ass badge and have them all win it. All right, let's go to. Uh, by the way, it's at Sergey Kelly. At Sergey Kelly, go and follow him on Twitter. He's from CampusReform.org. Go and check out their great reporting. Uh, a Georgia TA didn't even mince words. Some people have to die. Some pe- some white people may have to die. Who, who said this? And in what context? So it was said by um, a a Georgia TA in a classroom. A TA is a teacher's apparently- assistant, right? I'm sorry, what? That's a teacher's assistant, a TA? Yes, exactly. Okay. Go ahead. Yes. And so uh, apparently it's because you have to – All there, there's always been this conflict. He brought up in the black community and all this stuff, and he says instead of having blacks and all this violence between them, they need to focus on another thing. And the reason they're focusing on other things is because they've been suppressed by that outside group. Okay, so kill the outside group? Yeah, they're saying essentially you have to focus on the real problem and not in your communities. Well, is that a quote? Some white people may have to die? Yeah, that campus reform pulled that out, and it's they led with that because it's, it's a horrible title. <laughs> no, it's disgusting. I mean, he's talking about uh, – he's making ridiculous comparisons. And now does this guy still have a job? Um. I believe so. Yeah, I believe he did apologize, and I believe the university, the they said that. Well, it is in his space to say that because that's his personal platform. It doesn't reflect the larger university. Yes, it does. If if he works there, it does, uh, and that's that's yeah, the I mean, interesting yeah. part. I mean, hello. <laughs> so so I mean, so he apologized, and he said, "What I meant to say is, I love white Christmases." I mean, how do you apologize and? And backtrack from saying something like some white people may have to die. I mean, is there any context that he offered, or he just apologized? Um, it seems like he he really just kind of gave you know he kind of was like forced into the apology by his own university because they realized how bad it was. Um, and they keep they just really they're defending him on his personal capacity. And this is not the first time this guy has done this. So. It's very interesting. I don't want him to die, but he certainly shouldn't be teaching anybody. It's Sergey Kelly from CampusReform.org. We've got time for one more. University of Notre Dame, a Catholic university, a, a, which yeah. you would assume is steeped in Christian values, is having a, a what is it, a, some sort of a whiteness get to the confronting whiteness event, but they're not talking much about it. Why? Well, because it seems like they were reached out for comment. Many different parts of the university were reached out by campus reform for comment, yeah. and they really didn't have much to say. I mean, per, it's probably because they realize this program is very hypocritical and it just doesn't, it's not good. Are they still going to do it? <laughs> I'm sorry? Are they still going to do it? Is it still happening? Oh, yeah. Yes, it's still going. There's, it's planned for January 25th, so it's still going. <laughs> but what do you? Can you educate me 
because you're a very intelligent guy. Maybe you can make me understand. What does confronting whiteness mean? You see a white guy and you go up and say, hey, you're all white and stuff. I mean, what, what does that mean? Well, it's really designed for white people themselves to confront their their whiteness and whether that relates to the history of how their ancestors have apparently oppressed people and how they've gotten to where they are based on their color skin. And really, it's kind of that implicit bias training where it's like you need to know what's in you so we can change that. It's very weird stuff. Because we don't like what's in you. But if we said confronting blackness or brownness or whateverness, we'd be in big trouble, mm-hmm. wouldn't we? Oh, it, serious trouble. <laughs> the fact that I just made that comparison means that I'm in trouble, right? Oh, I'm sure, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sergey, listen, great reporting, great stuff. I want everybody to go to campusreform.org and go follow this guy. He is uh, at, at Sergey Kelly, S-E-R-G-E-I-K-E-L-L-Y, right? E-Y. E-Y, okay. Make sure you, uh, you spell Kelly with the E-Y at the end and go follow him. And uh, listen, let's talk again, my friend. Appreciate your time. Sounds good. Thank you. Thank you, Joe. Back after this in the Joe Pag Show. Stay right here. 